Hello all, welcome to The Crow Show. Um, I wanted to do a special edit today um, to thank Darren Crapo and UFO Planet for all the support and mentorship they have that he has personally offered me. And I would also like to thank Audrey and Milton Finch for the support they have given The Crow 777 YouTube channel. And lastly, I would like to thank the green-eyed orb watcher, whoever he or she may be, for the support that I have received from that quarter. Okay, I want to give you some views of the moon that you might not typically get to see. Um, this is with a 26 millimeter eyepiece. If you have a really good set of binoculars, you won't get quite this close. But if you have a modest telescope, you can get views like this with a good eyepiece in. Um, it, it, the moon is on, I think it's, it's either a 16 or an 18 year cycle. I think it's an 18 year cycle, which means as that shadow passes the moon each night, you get a different view, and that cycle doesn't complete until 18 years later, so you can really see cool things. And I know I've stated that there's a hologram up there, but I have also stated that I believe the moon is there and that we often see it, and I think we're looking at the real moon right here. Um, so I just wanted to show, you know, you don't always get to see images like this. Now this is a typical view of Mars. Doesn't look very good, right? The seeing was horrible this night. It was the night after Mars was at opposition, and I'll show you what video typically looks like. And here again, you can't get a good focus. It's not much to look at. But I shot Mars the night before opposition, and you're about to see a pretty good shot. Now there's an awesome shot of Mars. It's not very often you get this. This was the night before opposition. You can see the polar cap and the dark rift. And you'll notice a blue haze down on the bottom there, which I always see this uh, opposite the polar ice cap there. Um, it's a really cool thing to see. And whenever a planet is in opposition, it means that it's basically as close as it's going to be to Earth. So it's always a great time to get out binoculars or a telescope and take a look. Now, I wanted to add one more thing. Uh, this next shot I'm going to show you is my telescope with no magnification and no tracking. Now, you can see the arrow shows where we start. You're looking at the clock of the solar system we live in. See how the, the planet is moving from our apparent point of view? That's the clock moving. So there's no tracking, and it's kind of a cool thing to see. So now I'll show you how to find Mars in the sky, and then I'll quickly talk about the upcoming eclipse on the 14th. Okay, so I want to quickly show folks how they can go out and view Mars. Um, I've got Stellarium loaded up here. That's the ocean. I've used the ocean because it's got a good flat horizon. And as you can see, I'm set up for 8 o'clock or 20 hundred hours uh, on, the, four, on uh, the fourth month, tenth day um, that I'm filming this. Mars is right here. It's in Virgo right now, and Mars is in retrograde, which means from our point of view, it appears to be going backwards. Now I'm going to just run the minutes forward and you can see how Mars rises. And again, if you go out and look due east and you can do the time conversion, I'm on the west coast of California, so at 8 o'clock-ish, it's far enough above the horizon that I can see it. You can see up here, above here is the moon. So with modest binoculars or a modest telescope, um, even with your naked eyes to see the planet Mars, they're interesting things to see and you should go out and learn where these things can be viewed and uh, be familiar with the sky. Um, it's important to know, uh, I know a lot of people think astrology is all bunk, but there is a scientific astrology. Um, there is a reason why they say that Mars is in Virgo because it's like a big clock and it lets us know that when these zodiac signs are in line we have a way to know where the planet is in that cycle um, and I'll also show you here how to prepare for the coming full lunar eclipse okay so let's talk about the eclipse that's coming up on April 14 um, first of all you can see that I have my time set here for April 14 2200 hours is 10 o'clock but I'm at 58 minutes so I am just barely before 11 p.m. at night Pacific daytime or west coast of California time you can do your conversion so what's going to happen here is at 1020 p.m. Um, the penumbra now that's the outer part of the shadow which is not as it visible it's a dimmer part of the shadow of the earth that will begin to cover the moon at 1058, well actually here I'll run it in. So you can see here that Saturn is in Libra, Mars, which is actually at the, its closest approach, even though six days before this it was at opposition, it is actually on this very night 
at its closest approach to Earth. So let's zoom in on the moon here and we'll go through what's going to happen. And the rotation that you see as I do this is not real rotation because I'm centering the moon so that you can see what's going on. So right now at 1058 the penumbra is going to come across the moon. Um, we're going to roll it up until, let's see, partial eclipse begins at 1058. So I'm going to run the minutes here and you'll see on the left side of the moon there, here comes the umbra, which is the dark part of the shadow of the earth. And you can watch the time roll by. And then there is totality. Totality of the eclipse is at 10.07 Pacific Standard Time, or the west coast of California. So again, 12.07 is totality for the lunar eclipse. Now I'll keep rolling by so you can see the rest of the eclipse. And I'm rolling minutes here. And again, the rotation is not true because I'm forcing this to stay centered so you can see. Now you can see the umbra, the dark part of the shadow, is beginning to leave the moon. And uh, mid-eclipse will be at 12.46 a.m. And then partial eclipse ends at 2 in the morning, 2.33 in the morning, the partial eclipse will end. And then that, the outer shadow, shadow, the penumbra, the last visible portion of this, will end at 3.10 a.m. Pacific Daytime. Now, the last thing I want to mention is there's been a lot going around about a blood moon. Now, this is how it works. The color of an eclipse, we are told, is determined by the sunsets and the sun rises on the earth. In other words, you can't predict what a sunset or a sunrise is going to look like, so you cannot predict what the color of an eclipse is going to be. Um, it may be a good red one, but it could be one of those rusty ones that we've seen in the past. So I would point out to you that if what we have been told affects the color of eclipse, there is no way to predict a blood moon. And so there it is. Um, prepare. It's going to be a great night. Mars will be closest approach to Earth. Saturn will be right there in Libra. And we will get a full lunar eclipse, which I believe is the first one we've seen since 2011. There it is.